The Honorable Dr. Eccles Fio Garbra talks about Kwame Nkrumah's promotion of peaceful uses of nuclear power and Nkrumah's creation of more than 300 industries in Ghana during the first couple of years of independence. Imagine where Ghana would be if he had not been undermined by Western powers. Well, Ghana under Kwame Nkrumah, uh, first of all, he created the, the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences in, uh, in about 1958, about within a year of Ghana becoming independent. And he was the initial president of that whole academy himself. So he recognized the importance of science and technology for solving um, Ghana and Africa's problems. As early as the 1950s, as soon as he became leader of government business, even before Ghana became independent, he established uh, a project for an African, a Ghanaian University of Science and Technology, which eventually became named as the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Um, then he also established uh, another committee on which an uncle of mine served, right? that uncle, my mother's brother, served on both the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology Planning Committee and also the Volta River Authority Planning Committee. These were two very important projects that were to bring power, energy to Ghana and also to bring science and technology and progress um, to Ghana. Um, then he, after forming the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, he then empowered these scientists to look at various breakthroughs and at that time, it became known that atomic energy and eventually, eventually nuclear energy are going to be very important attributes for nation, nations that were going to be at the cutting edge of science and who, which were also going to have the appropriate power and global recognition. So an atomic energy reactor project was created in a part of Accra called Kwabenya. And um, uh, a number of scientists were sent mostly to the Eastern Bloc, the Soviet Union, and other places to study um, nuclear sciences and, and atomic sciences, came back to develop peaceful uses of atomic and nuclear energy. But I think all of this got to the attention of the United States administration, which was a little nervous about any African country having such knowledge and such power as far back as the 1960s. If you go and look at how the U.S. has reacted to Iran having nuclear power or North Korea having nuclear power. You can imagine if in 2018 the U.S. can be this concerned, how much uh, worried they would have been way back in the 1960s for an African country, not an Asian country, not a Middle Eastern country, having this kind of power. So they basically overthrew Kwame Nkrumah in February 1966. This is a very well-documented action that involved the Central Intelligence Agency of the United States and some Ghanaian collaborators. And partly due to that incident, Ghana has had a hard time uh, making up for the progress that was being made under Kwame Nkrumah. The progress was not just in atomic and scientific technological innovation, but even in ordinary manufacturing. Ghana was assembling vehicles in those days. We were assembling electronic products, producing our own television sets, our own radio sets, our own refrigerators in the 1960s. Since then, we've been having difficulty even producing any glass or any um, tires. Firestone Tire in the United States was assembling car tires in Ghana at the time. Um, our Boston Glass Factory was producing glass of all kinds for Ghana's industrialization. If you kill a cow in those days in Ghana, the skin was used to be processed in a tannery for leather products, and the leather products then went to another factory to, you know, manufacture shoes. The meat went into a meat processing plant for corned beef and other meat products, and so many other industries. About 300 in industries were established by Kwame Nkrumah in less than 15 years of his being a leader of government business, a prime minister, and a president. The pharmaceutical industry, the beverage industry, the paint making industry were all cement making. Were all being uh, and, and taken by Ghana in those days, 1960s. It's been a long time trying to crawl back. So the potential for Africa and for Ghana to relive this old experience, its old achievements, is still, is still possible. And now that we have a number of continental bodies that again Nkrumah encouraged and promoted, including the African, what is now African Union Commission, which used to be the Organization of African Union, um, organization of African yeah, yeah, yeah. Union, OAU, African Unity, rather, yeah. Organization of African Unity, 
and the African Development Bank, which has also then created a number of other Pan-African organizations, including African Export Import Bank, and of course we had an African Parliament, we have African Course of Human Rights and Justice, and of course we also promoted an African High Command, which would have been a military uh, body of, made up of many African nations, which could have worked to prevent any one nation from destabilizing itself and having civil wars and civil disobedience, as we've seen in a number of African countries for years. All these wonderful ideas of improvement just couldn't happen because of the intervention in Ghana. And we are praying that under new leadership in Africa, some of these ideas can come back, especially if we network with our brothers and sisters in the diaspora. Interview with the Honorable Dr. Ekwo Spiogarbra, former Ghana Minister of Trade and Investment and former Ambassador to the United States. Conducted at the 2018 African Trade and Industry Global Summit, World Trade Center, Washington, D.C.